This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build your online presence. I built my brand new website, hellosola.com on Squarespace. It was so easy to use, I recommend it if you're looking to build your website yourself. Go to squarespace.com babish and use code babish to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. There we go. Hey folks, before we get started with today's episode, I just wanted to let you know that we took precautions to keep everyone safe when we were filming, including, but not limited to, getting COVID and antibody tests. The behind the scenes camera crew were also wearing masks. Stay safe and enjoy the episode. In the beginning, there was only Sola. Now, the wheel demands she go head to head to beat Babish. Only one can rise to the top and take the golden tiny whisk. It's time to stump Sola. Welcome, Bakers, to your technical challenge. I'm excited. I'm a little scared. I'm actually scared. You should be all of those things. It's weird that you don't have a British accent. So, sorry. Better, thank you. More comfortable now. Yeah, no, I feel, I feel much yeah, better. Good. You got any advice for us? Take your time, one at a time. I'm very bad at riddles. Well, without further ado, on your mark, get set, bake. <laughs> I mean, the ingredients are pretty Final basic. Set. We're up here. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a lot of that. <laughs> All right, should I do this? Okay, we have what looks to me like some Ingredients. An hour and a half to make six cigar cookies. Um, we have some round cold things, uh, some sticks of some kind. Uh, this is a box, I don't know why this is here. In our technical challenge, each baker is given identical ingredients and the same unhelpful recipe. So I'm guessing what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some kind of cookie. I chose cigar cookies because they are quite difficult to get right. Scar cookies are a twill cookie. They must have a pale exterior, a golden browned edges, a light crispy texture, and a luxurious chocolate ganache filling. For the wafers, preheat oven. I'm gonna go with 350. God, I'm gonna do 375 Fahrenheit. She definitely gave us more than enough time than, than we actually need, so if I screw up, we'll just make some more. It says for the filling, make filling. Very detailed instructions. <laughs> Allow to cool until pipeable consistency is achieved. So definitely gotta do that first. I'm gonna make it second because I don't want it to sit around too long in case it solidifies or something. You know, if there's one thing I learned about baking is that you do not have to follow the instructions. I don't wanna waste any time. I can hear that she's making the filling first. Fatal mistake, I don't know, I have no idea. I hear a lot of sounds from upstairs. I wonder how it's going. So the first thing I have to do, <gasps> First thing I have to do is make a meringue. To get a really nice glossy meringue, you need to add the sugar slowly while you're beating the eggs. It doesn't say to do that, but you know, again, I'm not here to follow directions, I'm here to win. You're already whipping? I, I'm doing it different. I'm not following the directions like, like a square. Following directions like a square or a winner. Our chocolate looks melty. It's my oven preheated, oven's preheated. I can't believe he's already whipping. What's going on? Must be nice to have a microwave. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Gotta pay attention to what I'm doing here. <laughs> That's a stiff peak. We're hard out here, okay? Ooh. Ah. <laughs> Got an hour and 18 minutes, okay. So this will have a solid hour to cool down before we attempt to do any piping. Okay, so now we have our meringue. It's stiff peaks, which means that when you move your whisk around in it and lift it up and flip it over, it should hold a peak. I did it a few times. If you didn't see it, you're not paying attention. And I don't, what are you zooming in on me like this for? <laughs> very, very easy to over with a meringue, and I think that's gonna be the thing that'll mess this up. So I'm gonna just stay here and stare at it. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to win. <laughs> That's not a very great British baking show. I am here to make friends, even though I'm about to get my ass handed to me. <laughs> I didn't go to Stiff Peaks because I don't think it matters. I guess we'll find out if that ended up being a problem. To get these really super thin is I'm gonna make a sort of mold. So I'm gonna just kind of freehand this. Oh my God. Sun goes up, sun goes down. Andy makes a perfect oval. Can't explain that. It's a half a cup of flour and it doesn't say to sift it, but I think we should sift it. 
I think that's a good move, actually. Look at that. God, I'm a genius. I'm such a genius. Oh my God. I am such a f***ing genius. <laughs> Andrew's like way ahead of me. He's got a cookie. You have a cookie in the oven. He has a cookie in the oven. I'm still messing around with batter. But a critical error for Andrew may be that he's just messing around generally. I should be, why am I not timing this? What am I doing? Stop what? Whatever left! Jesus Christ. It doesn't seem like there's any way in hell that this is gonna, no, no, no. This is like a pancake. This is so thick. Okay. I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna lose, Andrew. Look at that. Look at that. Can you believe it? Would you believe it? <laughs> Good things aren't happening down here. Let's go. You gotta scoop the goop if you wanna poop and poop, poop, poop. This is harder than it looks. My antennas wiggle when I'm pleased. I always thought the bakers on a Great British Bake Off were impressive. Now I'm even more impressed. I think I might be going, I might be doing well up here. I don't know, but I think I'm doing okay. But imagine doing it with a crew you don't know and people you don't know in like a big tent. And Paul Hollywood. Man, we're looking good here. Okay. Wait, so, okay. How much time did you say we have left? Uh, 36 minutes. Dear God. It's feeling like it's crisping. They look pretty good, right? I didn't make them the right way, but I made them. I just realized why I said to make the ganache first, because it probably needs a long time to chill. And I think I'm screwed. I think, I think we're gonna make it. I need my ganache to cool and solidify much better than it's doing. So I'm gonna spread it out on a quarter sheet and fridge it, and this should help it solidify faster. That filled up more easily than I expected. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, come on. Here's the ganache. Oh boy, it's really set. Every time you see a reality show and it's like down to the wire, you're like, ah, bull This is like genuinely down to the wire. Am I just showing off now? <laughs> How much time? One minute. With seconds remaining, Andrew still has one biscuit to complete. 45 seconds. Oh my God. Oh my God. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Boom. Holy sh did you see that? That was right. <laughs> that was exactly on time. It's judgment time for these smoking cigar cookies. Uh, uh, biscuits, I'm English. So I'm gonna start with this one right here. Coloring's pretty good. It's nice and pale, but it would've been better if the edges had gotten a little bit more golden brown. Good flavor on the filling. It's great. Okay, interesting. On to the next one. The coloring in this one I think is actually really spot on. I think the difference with this one is that the ovals um, weren't spread enough. Where, so now it's kind of just like a cannoli shell that's like lightly folded, but the coloring is, is better, so. Let's taste. Mm. So this one, it's actually, the, the wafer itself is a little bit thicker, so it kind of does get a little less um, crunchy when you bite into it. But under the time limit, I think these are both wonderful, wonderful, wonderful attempts. However, I'm a judge now, so I have to make a decision. Better color, and even thickness. Okay, in second place, are these right here. <laughs> <laughs> it was so close though. You ate my only underbaked one. Oh, <laughs> no. I, put it on top. If you take a bite of a different one just to tell me. <laughs> you don't have to change your decision, obviously. Just tell me if it's baked better. No? What? It is better, but it still has the same effect happening. Okay. Which means that the winner is this plate right here. <laughs> At least I have my dignity. <laughs> Excellent job. Good job, makers. A fitting trophy for both of us. Onto the showstopper. Yep. Nice job. Uh, welcome back to the great American Babish Cook-Off. Now we're at the showstopper part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um.
The showstopper part comes at the end. <laughs> it's the most suspenseful and most impressive part of the program. Bakers, today's showstopping challenge, today's showstopper challenge is today, Bakers. <laughs> today, oh, the judge, sorry, Bakers, Bakers. <laughs> the judges want you to make a cookie centerpiece based upon your favorite fictional holiday. There is no time limit. Ready, set, bake. <laughs> so what I'm looking for in a fictional holiday display is spirit, color, presence, cute animals, um, bows, and also it can't just be looks, it has to taste good. That's right, presentation for me, probably the most important thing, but at the end of the day, I wanna feel bad about breaking off a piece and eating it. Like I want it to be so beautiful, so perfect, that I almost feel bad, but then when I go in, it's still delicious. A puppy would be good too. Yeah, if there yeah. was a puppy like that jumped out. That'd be awesome. Right. So you might not be able to tell, but I lost the technical. Um, <laughs> yes, that was very funny. I need to wow with my showstopper. My made up holiday that I am uh, going to be celebrating is uh, Captain Picard Day. Captain Picard Day is once a year. Uh, the children of the Enterprise uh, make arts and crafts to celebrate their captain. So I decided to very, very inappropriately celebrating P Captain Picard Day with a Borg ship. And I also want to make a dozen little Borgs uh, to, to put inside. <laughs> That's inappropriate because they're a collective. They're a single consciousness, so to call them Borgs is incorrect. They're Borg. <laughs> Andrew's showstopper features Earl Grey infused gingerbread biscuits and a lemon gingerborg army that thinks with a single consciousness. So for my showstopper, the holiday that I'm inspired by is Festivus. Festivus is a made-up holiday from Seinfeld, and it's like a it's a way to shun capitalism. So instead of a tree with all these ornaments, you have a Festivus pole. The traditional Festivus meal is meatloaf and lettuce. And then part of Festivus is you have to air your grievances and perform feats of strength. Those are the three things I wanna highlight on my showstopper. Solar's Festivus display sits atop a colorful puffed rice platform and features grievance cookies, minced meat biscotti, a homemade Oreo tower, and gingerbread men who are unafraid of death. Go ahead and lower your expectations and let's get started. And start they do. Andrew with the dough for his Borg ship exterior and Solo with the pumpkin spiced puff rice foundation for her Festivus display. There isn't really a way to do this without getting sticky. I've literally never made any of this before. <laughs> I've never made a cookie centerpiece, showstopper, 3D model. I'm gonna start cooking my Granny Smith apples for my minced meat biscotti. This won't really be minced meat. This is gonna be a whole lot of dried fruit inside my biscotti, but I'm gonna call it minced meat because it's supposed to look like meatloaf, you know? You know? And while Sola is well into completing two of her bakes, things for Andrew are grinding to a halt. I feel like that resembles minced meat. You're gonna tell me it doesn't. That's cool. We're gonna make a cookie dough. I'm gonna bake it in a loaf pan because I want it to kind of resemble meatloaf. Adding to the drama, Andrew enlisted the help of Kindle to make up for his lack of formal training, something he might get disqualified for if we'd bothered to make any rules. All right, is it wrong that I'm using your help? Your decision. You know what? Stand by then. You were fired? <laughs> What did you do, Kendall? He just felt bad, so no. He should feel bad for getting help. Uh, I, got, I got nothing to say to you. It's okay, I, I helped Sola earlier, and then I was actually her downfall. Yeah, you helped Sola during the technical. But it hurt me. And then I helped Sola. Kendall, get up, get back up here. <laughs> I, I'm gonna address the controversy. Kendall's helping me with my mise en place. She's measuring some things out for me. <sighs> I am an amateur. I do not know what I'm doing, and I think I need a little leg up. What's so funny? Wall number two. Yeah. She's 
fine! But fine won't cut it for our bakers. To win the showstopper, their very best is needed, and that pressure builds as their unlimited time remains unchanged. Well, this is a big part of my decor, you know? If I pick that up, it cracks. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do something that I've never done before in my life, and that is decorate gingerbread men using a, what I would call, pretty advanced icing technique. Uh, this, I don't think this flooding icing is thin enough. <laughs> no. I have my little gingerboard men. They still need a green eye. Once I make the filling, we're gonna just move and make our pull. And really, that's the only thing that we need for Festivus. Everything else doesn't matter, which is great, because nothing else is working. My Borg army. I've never been so proud of anything in my entire life that I am of this object in front of me. No, sorry, I just, I'm happy that they're standing up. Everything's terrible. Um, I disagree. He's decorating. I, I'm not even decorating yet. Oh, are these burning? Yes, they burned. We'll deal with that. Yeah, I just don't have extra time. I need to glue together the cube. I think the judges are getting here in like 45 minutes. Our baker's unlimited time turned out to be a lie, as we have celebrity judges coming and they have way more important shit to do later. This is this is very familiar feeling. Except this is not supposed to be sad. I have a really tricky bit. How the hell if you press it too hard on one side it's gonna it's gonna collapse. I just need everyone to tell me it's gonna be okay. They're gonna fill this with lights. Kendall and I have to be your voice of hope. We will. Look at the apron you're wearing. Yeah. Believe in the apron. It's got to deal with all the love and support over here behind the camera. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long road for our bakers. Okay. And now our judges must decide who is on the one to victory. What are my final words? You know, it could be worse. There it is. That's my board cube. I'm gonna go have all the whiskey. <laughs> Judges, I humbly place before you my Borg ship. Uh, it's cube, and uh, it is to celebrate Captain Picard Day. He was the captain of the USS Enterprise 1701D in uh, Star Trek Next Generation. This is, was his sworn mortal enemy, the Borg. And this would be a very disrespectful centerpiece, actually, to serve him. But, uh, you know, this way, he, at least he gets to smash it apart. He, he gets to destroy the enemy. But if you wouldn't mind cutting the lights, you'll see the light effect. Whoa! Wow. As you can see, it goes. Fancy. Lights, please. And then when we lift it up, you'll see the Borg army inside. Wow. wow. So I invite you to destroy it and dig in. I like the transformative effect of the reveal. This doesn't look highly edible to me. I like the color. It is a very impressive looking replica of that ship. It glows in the dark with these lights on the inside. And then it had that storytelling element where he popped the top on it. And then there's this army underneath. So if this tastes good, which it smells good. It smells good. Then the, the Andrew, is there. you did pretty good. Let's try a biscuit. Oh, so those they're... are glued on with sugar glue, so you might need to put a little, okay. yeah. Flexible. Yep. <laughs> not as formidable an army as I was led to believe watching the show. Flexibility is not something I normally look for in a cookie, but hold on. Did we get the snap? No snap. A little soft. Didn't get a snap. It's all right. But good, classic gingerbread cookie. This, we gotta, we gotta get into it. <laughs> we gotta dive in. Ooh. I spent right. so long on it. I know. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> mm. I'm in. I think I'm in. There we go. Oh. Ah. No puppy, no kitten. Good thing with the knife wielding. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty bendy. So it's a royal icing mm. and mm -hmm. the Earl Grey tea biscuit. Santes, uh, you know, I thought the, the gingerbread was a little bit better, but I think you have to expect that. I, I, I don't know about you, but I am a gingerbread house eating veteran. Mm. I've done it for a long time. Okay. And I've found <laughs> that the more architecturally sound you make something you're eating, yeah. you're gonna have to compromise and taste. Yeah, so. I'm gonna give it points for spice, structure, and uh, just a liberal use of luster dust. 
<laughs> the way that this changes color, you know? It's, this is formidable. This yeah, is coming out the is. gate very, very strong. Andrew, you should be very proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. I feel bad for eating it, which mm. to me is the most important criteria line item when you're judging a fictional cookie holiday competition. Thank you very much, judges. You're welcome. Thank you. Good job. It's Thank not you. usually with the contestants. <laughs> <laughs> It's been an emotional day. Mm -hmm. A lot of holidays and always are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my fake holiday is Festivus. If you're not familiar, Festivus is a holiday that um, George Costanza's father came up with. Mm. It's a Festivus for the rest of us. The main thing of Festivus is you know you shun capitalism and all of the the decor of the holiday, and in place of a Christmas tree, you have a Festivus pole made of. Oreos. The traditional Festivus meal is meatloaf and lettuce, which we have represented here with our mince ah. meatloaf biscotti and our lettuce twills. So here we have some fortune cookies filled with grievances, and then you must perform feats of strength. So here we have our wrestlers. That is a chocolate milk mud pit. So please feel free to uh, dunk. This isn't related to Festivus. It was more of a me thing. Uh, that's some absinthe to dunk your biscotti into. And then it's all resting on a base of pumpkin spice Rice Krispie treats with hmm. homemade marshmallows. There's a lot happening here. In both, in both. But I'll say with this one, you know, I, I kind of get it a little bit more. You know, like as far as the holiday vibe, yeah. this, I connect with it a little bit more eyeball test. I mean, I do feel like the two together get both ends of the holiday spectrum of like death and despair, but then also like party and joyfulness. Right. And we're definitely on like party joy end of the spectrum. Should we dig in? I think so. Oh. 2020, you're the worst. <laughs> 2020, why are you still here? But then you like eat it up and it destroys your grievance. Mm hmm We can move past it. Pretty harmonious. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm. biscuit. It's interesting they both have a gingerbread. Listen to that snap. A mm, little bit of a snap. That hits. <laughs> that hits. <laughs> Biscotti. Mm. Mm. Whoa. Chewy, licorice, boozy. Absinthe, I'm seeing things. Totally. I'm diving in there, I'm gonna just snap off the top of this pole. Whoa. Mm. You're already in the tower. It's It bangs. Mm. On a taste level, mm -hmm. all of this stuff mm -hmm. is hitting. This is delicious. I could sit here and demolish this whole thing piece by piece. It's and, like and you serve it at a party and then it is the party. It didn't compromise taste in order to be creative or to tell a story or all of those different things. So to that, Sola, I tip my antlers. That said though, we have a very difficult decision in front of us because it is strength mm -hmm. to strength here. <laughs> now Andrew and Sola must hide away with the cats while the judges decide who will take home the golden tiny whisk. I'm just gonna bottom line my perspective on this. I, I can tell that you're ready to go. 2020 has been a lot of hard. It's been a lot of dark. It's been a lot of toughness. I get that vibe here. I appreciate the playfulness, I appreciate the reveal and the artistry, but like, I'm done with doom and gloom, man. I want a pile of presents, I want to ride a color, I want to mess around and just have fun. So I feel the festivity coming off of this board. Let me knock down the fourth wall here because when I walked in, that one? Yeah, yeah, this one. <laughs> We've already knocked it down, I won't spin it. And in my head, I just, I looked at that one and I said, Andrew, that's a grand slam. You know, I feel like this is not that dissimilar to gingerbread houses that I've seen kind yeah. of in a different way. And for that reason, I was like, Andrew's gonna win this. Okay. But then when I started eating, <laughs> <laughs> Things change for me in a major way because Super important. everything on here is amazing. I'm really blown away, very impressed by both of these, you know, from the eyeball test right when I walked in, looking at Andrews, I was like, there we have a winner. Then I sit down and I start snacking on Solas and then all of a sudden, 
It becomes anybody's competition to win, but for me, I think I know my decision. Before we give a judgment, I just wanna say that both dishes were amazing. We were both very impressed by both of them. It really was a razor thin decision here, but we do have a winner. Yeah, every week that goes by, it gets harder and harder to say goodbye to one of you, <laughs> but uh, that's where we are. The winner is... Sola. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, it was a challenging day, but um, you did an amazing job. I was very intimidated. I kept coming upstairs and looking at this spaceship and saying, maybe I should just go home. I didn't come downstairs once. All I heard were your lamentations of how much you hated what you were doing yep. and how you thought it was over. Yep. And I was like, maybe I have a shot at this. <laughs> but amazing job. You deserve that tiny whisk. Um, One more round of applause. So, so what? What a day. What a day. Normally this is the part of the show where I ask you, do you think you were stumped? And I think that you can't, you, 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 it's indisputable that you were not stumped because you beat Babish. I really, really genuinely thought you were gonna win. Your showstopper was really, you should be proud. It looked very impressive. Thank you very much. I, I, when I came up and I saw like, when I was just looking at the pieces yesterday, I was like, damn. And then when I saw the ice and all the little windows and the lights, I was like, okay, I should just go home. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> Great job today. Your stuff was delicious. It was true to form. It was it was a great tribute to the f holiday of Festivus. I hope so. And it was a Festivus <laughs> for the rest of us. Thank you. So, anyway, we'll see you next time here on Stump Solo. <laughs> Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to help build your website. Check out my new website, hellosola.com, which I built on Squarespace. The platform is user-friendly and easy to use, so I was able to set up my website exactly how I imagined it. You can find my recipes, recent videos, sign up for my newsletter, or just look at photos of my dogs. Go to squarespace.com babish and use code babish to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Being and feeling defeated, Andrew reached out to one of his baking inspirations for consolation after his loss. Peter, how you doing, man? Yeah, good, Andrew. How are you? I've been better. Uh, I don't know if you can tell from my apron, but uh, I kind of just lost real hard. Uh... I mean, you did a great job. It looked phenomenal. It looked like a Borg ship. I mean, you know, maybe one of the biscuits wasn't wasn't too great and all the solos were pretty much perfect, but man, it looked awesome. I think you did a great job. Listen, I think everybody knew that was going to happen before cameras even started rolling. I think everybody knew <laughs> that that was what was gonna happen. Any recommendations for how I could make my my biscuits less uh, chewy and dense next time? I think, you know, biscuits just don't overwork it. Maybe your ratios were a little bit off, so maybe just, just go back and change, tweak that a little bit. Well. I mean, I just got advice from Great British Bake Off winner, Peter Sawkins. I'm ready for round three. Next time we do one of these, would you be my proxy? Would you play as me? And then I, you know, it'd be you versus Sola, and then I don't have to do any baking. <laughs> sounds, sounds like a plan. I don't think, I think I'd struggle taking on Sola though, I must say. I think that would be a very tough challenge. Uh, anybody would, because she's really good. But dude, thank you so much for coming by. And um, yeah, happy baking. Thanks, Andrew.